Spectrum wants to hear your views. You can SMS at any time during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. Hello, good evening. Uh, you're welcome to Spectrum on Radio 1. I'm your host, Edmond Chizito. On Spectrum tonight, what are the challenges likely to frustrate the 2012-2013 national budget? The 2012-2013 national budget, which was presented last week, continues to raise questions within the public domain, with much of that debate now shifting to what is required to ensure full implementation of the interventions proposed by government. Finance Minister Maria Chuanuka indicated that the budget would be implemented based on a strategy that will ensure value for money, including spending on key priorities and well-designed programs to avoid wastage. Analysts are, however, pointing to other challenges that are likely to frustrate the budget, while others say that the budget process in Uganda cannot deliver the desired goals, preferring that the National Development Plan um, uh, as the main determinant of the required interventions. Budgeting and financial management principles call for what is called budget discipline to ensure that what has been projected is actually fulfilled. Now, at the Ministry of Finance, a new department known as the Budget Monitoring and Accountability Unit has been established to deal with budget performance and accordingly quarterly reports will be furnished to Parliament. Government has also structures up to the sub-county level, including RDCs, sub-county chiefs, and now the new Baraza initiative to ensure that government programs are executed. Parliament is also expected to play a major role in monitoring uh, government programs, but reports that have emerged suggest that MPs prefer to stay in Kampala and only a few have tried to go up country. Now, in the last parliament, the eighth, uh, some MPs received money to monitor the NARS program, but no report has been published to, uh, to date. So, as we continue to analyze this year's budget, next year's budget, we focus on the factors likely, likely to frustrate performance of the budget and measures that can be taken to ensure budget discipline. Our guests tonight, President of the Uganda Federal Alliance, Honorable Betikani, you're most welcome to Spectrum. Good evening, listeners, and it's a pleasure for me to be here. Honorable William Okecho, former chairman of the Budget Committee in Parliament, you're most welcome, Honorable Okecho. Good evening, listeners, and I'm very happy to be with you. We are also joined by Mr. Morrison Rakakamba, Program Manager at Traweza East Africa. Good evening, uh, dear <coughs> listeners. Honorable Okecho, how attainable are the goals set out in this year's budget? Um, I think let me start by, if I'm indulged a bit, let me start by sending my condolences to my king for having lost his wife this morning. Hey, Adola. Yes. Sorry. It was a, a shock to many of us, and it almost determined whether she would come here or not, but I wish him strength, and I wish the entire community uh, strength to ensure that uh, we give our queen uh, a good and a befitting send-off. Sorry about that. This is a really sad moment. Sorry to have uh, diverted a bit, but I think uh, that was Please go. That's that was in my soul. <laughs> That's all right. Yes. That's all right. We understand yes. and commiserate with that situation. Yeah. The, you asked about... Uh, the goals in the budget, how attainable in your view are they? These goals are as all other goals in, in budgets, in other budgets. And uh, to me, unless there is budget discipline, it is not going to be easy to attain all of them. One thing we must understand is that uh, we have a very, very good national development plan, which should have been hived off just for one year to form this budget. It has got fantastic goals, and we thought that this could be the, the, the best way of achieving those goals. So whatever goals that there are in this present budget, unless we have got proper budget display, we may not be able to achieve them, or to achieve all of them. Really, that is my, uh, my main concern. Of course, there are targets. Eh? taxing so this and that at whatever level and so on but if the performance of the economy is not very very good eh, it's not to the mark it may not be easy to achieve as of now we've not even achieved the tax revenue goals that we had thought of for the 2011-2012 so we don't know whether we shall achieve the uh, is it 11 trillion 
that we expect to get from uh, or from the public and the donors and so on for this uh, this particular budget. And if that fails, the goals may also fail. Well, of course, you are still have two weeks to catch, to catch up, about 10 days to catch up before the end of the month. But maybe let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the 7% growth target. Do you think it can be achieved? It is going to be difficult. Because first of all, why did you fall to 3.2? If it fell 3.2 from 6.7, from 6.7, coming back to 6.7 is going to be an uphill task, and going further to come to 7 percent is not easy. Therefore, will it happen? 91, 93 to 1.8, 92, 93 to 7. There was ever 7.7. Yeah, but other economies were doing well, and and, and, and right now. So many economies are not doing as well. Right. So I don't think uh, Uganda will be allowed to achieve its goals in the environment which is so uncertain, which is so unclear right. for most other economies. The contagion effect could hold us back. Or could hold us back, definitely. Honorable Betty Kamia, how are you about these goals in your view? Um, I also wish to express my personal condolences to the death of uh, the Queen of the Japs, Japa the Japa dollar queen, the wife of a dollar. Mm -hmm. I only learned about it now, so mm -hmm. I would like to extend my condolences for myself and from Uganda Federal Alliance. Having said that, I agree with the Honorable Kecho that uh, the goals may not be, it's not likely that they will be attained, mainly because of carrying forward the issues that made attainment of the goals the year before and the year before, those issues keep getting carried forward and they don't get addressed. We have the same, if you like, incompetent or uncommitted staff or, or, or um, personnel. We have the same laid-back supervision. We have the same culture of uh, um, lavishness, the, the lavish style, whether the children in, in northern Uganda are dying of uh, nord northern of loading disease or not, the members of parliament will continue having their lavish break tea. Uh, the gov nothing in the government will stop because kids are, are dying in northern Uganda. Even the unnecessary pain will continue to be bought members of parliament will continue to travel business class and have the, so there is no response there's no um, uh, um, immediate response to issues that uh, that come up we shall continue with the business as usual state house will continue to present the supplementary budget you sure you are predicting things? i am thinking what have you been seen are you a prophet it's a pattern <laughs> you know? uh, the, the, the law of trends and patterns tells you that you don't even have to be a professor you just have to be a, 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 just a very ordinary uh, school s4 uh, s4 graduate to know that we read patterns and trends and uh, th they tell you if it happened so many if the if the curve is going like like this, say, say, uh, what has happened will happen again it, it, it will happen again mm. so state house will come up with their supplementary budget and in any case most of this money in this budget most likely has already been used up they will, they will be seeking uh, retrospective um, approvals stamping so the 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 ills that have been happening in previous budgets have not been addressed. So every year, every consecutive year, we just carry them forward. So they can only get, we don't know what happened. For instance, we started with the not Bonagagawale, uh, Ntandikwa. We don't know what happened to Ntandikwa. We don't know why Ntandikwa did not work. Then. We only carried forward the, Ill, 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 the problems of Ntandikwa to Bonabagagawale. It was not reviewed. And then we carried the ills of Bonabagagawale to circles. It was mm -hmm. not reviewed. We've carried the ills of circles to the, uh, youth programs, which had serious issues last year. We have not even heard about them, but now we're already giving them. So, you know, it's like uh, business as usual. 
So you don't think we'll get 7%? What's your figure for growth for this year? And fra plus, plus, of course, the ex ex exogenous factors. It's not like a, a Uganda is operating in a, in a isolation. In it, it's not in, in, in the sky while everybody else is down. So we are operating in a global um, environment where old democracies like Greece, like Spain, like, you know, all other Portugal. countries, Portugal are struggling and Uganda is just going to fly over them. Whoosh, well, but I mean, some of the problems that, we, that afflicted us last year, don't they? well, the Middle East and Northern Africa crisis seems to have abated. Prices, Nigeria the other day was predicting oil prices could fall. Ethiopia is predicting 11.7% growth. Yeah. No, but our but market is, is, is what is, is dwindling, as you know, for the major, the major products like coffee. Coffee in, the, in Europe? Yes, in Europe. Mm. Of so course. And, let's and hear from of you. Course. What's your view on this budget? Do you think we should get there 7% growth? No, for me, I, maybe I need to cut uh, an optimistic point of view, really, because, well, you can use math and numbers and patterns to, to determine the future because you know, everything is numbers and math is logic. But if we are to look at the math, you know, over, you know, five months ago, you had this inflation that was over 30% being driven by food inflation that went over 50 percent of that over 50 percent but now you have it at 18 percent so if you had to use the algorithms of trends then you 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 think that we are going into a right direction and of course the other aspect is that yes there are things that have gone wrong but there are things that are also doing well if you look at the attainment of the 250 megawatts you know Pujagari, a very very interesting thing because one of the key flagship or benchmark sectors you need to to be in a perfect way is energy and if you have energy then it means that you have factories working it means you have people lighting it means you have small factories doing work and it means that you have you know a level of productivity that is very interesting so all those are positive notes that for me if they were piggybacked on into other sectors then you could have some interesting things moving forward but of course within our budget architecture certainly there are reforms that must uh, that need to take place one of them is tackling the issue of budget outturn and the capability of ministries to absorb, to absorb the resources. Because if you look at the numbers, they are not very encouraging. And uh, you have like education by half year spent only 52%. You had <laughs> agriculture that had spent about 47%. And you have NADS that had spent on about 35% also. So unless the budgeted resources are released on time, unless the, the ministries <coughs> raise up their capacity, ability to be ready to rate, to be able to consume or to, to use those resources, to absorb those resources, uh, then certainly you have a problem. You have definitely have got some complaints that, that relate with things like um, um, the procurement process, especially those guys in infrastructure who say, you know, to get the designs, to get engineers approving, to get this minister approving, it takes even more than eight months. So it becomes very difficult uh, that after 12 months you're reading, you're, you're reading um, another another budget. Then there is also uh, just a comment on the supplementary budgets. I think the answer can be found in uh, reforming even the finance the finance act to say for a supplementary budget unless it's a disaster, it, it is something that for me should be outlawed because a supplementary budget is a vote of no confidence, especially in the, in the, in the budget. It means that you did not plan, it means that you didn't envisage, unless there, sh there has to be exceptions which should fit is like we do that it's a national disaster. That is something that can call for if it's nodding disease and things like that. So our budget architecture also needs to reform. And of, of course, also listening to the minister, I also felt that uh, we need to embroiden the way to be more specific in the way we are handling the budget. It has to be output based, it has to be target based, and it has to have clear indicators. If you say you are giving 52 billion to the National Agricultural Advisory Services, you should be able to tell us that our targets are to increase, for instance, the uh, are, to, are to reduce the ratio of the farmer household uh, to an advisory extensionist. For instance, now we have 15% farmers in this country who see an extension work per day. So if we are giving you 52 billion nuts, are you going to increase uh, the, the, the percentage of farmers who, who see an extension worker to 30 or 40%? If you are a national agricultural research organization or NARO, and you are, you are into the business of research and you're given 48 billion in 
this national budget. Are you telling us that after one year you are going to contain the banana wheat, you are going to contain uh, the coffee wheat, and you are going to come up with plant varieties and other innovations um, that would that would lead to containment of some of these weeds that are decimating economies in the rural. So certainly the, the other point of view is that we will need clear targets, we will need clear indicators, and unless that happens, uh, then it is going to be uh, a problem. <laughs> but but, but uh, before... Uh, no, no, no. Let me let, let me finish this other point. Okay. Right. Then the other point is that uh, <laughs> I think uh, there is also this cartel of uh, the brain, you know. Well, but maybe before you continue, the, 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 the Ministry of Finance they yeah. the budget monitoring yeah. and accountability. And maybe that's what part of its job. But no, but to, yeah. The point I wanted to make is that included. I like the fact that you mentioned that the Minister of Finance has this monitoring, the monitoring department that has introduced to monitor the budget. But I think the bigger role is really going to be the citizens themselves. They need to be to have the interest in the budget. They need to understand the budget numbers. If the budget says we are going to build um, 12 health centers in a particular region, then that region should hold the leaders accountable, they should keep following up, they should... We need to have a system where citizens participate in monitoring of the budget and hold leaders accountable, whether those leaders are in government or whether those leaders... And, and even, I, I actually agree with President M7 when he talked about church leaders, teachers, community leaders. So what more is these, these are people to work. My, my, own, my, my thing is that these are people, these are citizens who should also participate in following up this national budget and holding leaders accountable. But the barazas, all of these they need to be talked about. And for me, if Betty, if Honorable Betty Kame, the president of the Federal Alliance, is in a particular region, he should be able to tell them that, look, uh, in this national budget, this is what you got and you need to follow up with leaders and to make sure that it is. So do it's you think, both ways. Do you think it's going to work? I'm saying it's a mix of demand and supply. Well, if the you, product at the end of the day, try to be a seer tonight. Do you think it's going to work? Yeah, it should work. It should work. So well, what are the tools? Well, let's, let's, no. let's look at that in, in more detail. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, as this is Spectrum already on tonight, what are the challenges yeah. likely to frustrate the 2012-2013 National Budget? Our guests, Honorable Betty Kamia, President of the Uganda Federal Alliance, uh, Political Party, Honorable William Okecho, former Chairman of the Budget Committee in Parliament, and uh, Mr. Morrison Rokakamba, Program Manager at Hawaii East Africa. You two will be able to call in and contribute to this discussion. Honorable Ketcho, I know you want to respond to that, but... Definitely. I, I mean, there are so many... I like, but I'd like to hear from you some mm -hmm. of the things that you think we should have had in the budget that we did not hear, and that probably will be making you pessimistic. Very good. I, I wanted to know hmm, from the budget how we are going to implement the budget. Yes. The implementation deadlines are not there. Secondly, I wanted to know from the budget what we have already achieved from the previous budget. Huh? I don't. I don't seem to. I mean, I didn't seem to catch that one. You know, the, the, you know and that has been the mistake ever since. Well, ever since I was chairman of the budget committee of parliament, yes, uh, we have been emphasizing that let the ministry or government tell us how far we have achieved the previous budget. They even came out say in, in 2009 that uh, they have created that monitoring unit. But their budget performance reports didn't reflect eh? adherence to the plan. The adherence to the plan. Yes. The budget. So this um, this unit is not a new unit. It is something that has been there. Maybe it has just been revamped, you know, because it has failed all along. But I just hope that this time around it is going to work and should be able to tell us every quarter how much or how far we have attained our budget goals. Secondly, this issue of supplementaries, which he, this gentleman was talking about, you know, it is an ongoing saga. The Budget Act says you must not spend more than 3% yes. eh, of the budget. And what do we see? And what do we see? Every now and then there is a supplementary. What percentages do we go to? Sometimes it comes to 4%, sometimes it comes to what, you know? And there is a loophole there that you spend and then come under count. Now that puts everybody, you know, I mean the parliamentarians who approve the budget in a mess because there are certain expenditures they don't approve. And yet it is already supplementary. All right. What and else and do you think we should have had from the budget? Yeah. What else apart from the supplementaries? We pray that it won't happen this year. Uh, yeah, I said I wanted the implementation plan for this budget. Yes. Guidelines. 
how the budget is going to be. You know, I wanted to, to know the activities, specific activities that are going to be performed or well, attained, All right. which are kind of targets. You know, because we have always said that part, uh, well, I mean, budget should be uh, well, should be participatory. You know that people must participate in f uh, what in formulating the budget, but what they participate in is never seen by them when it comes to budget reading. All right. And therefore, they are not in a position to monitor the budget. They're in a position to attain okay. the goals which they wanted to achieve. Honorable Bet Kami, of course, I'd like us to look at some of the tools that and if, try to evaluate them. Things like the Graduate uh, Ventures Capital Scheme. It's brand new. I'd like us to evaluate to see how it's going to work. The uh, low inflation, targeted low inflation, most likely is going to happen unless something out. Looking at the trends, it's been falling the last th four months, three months actually. Uh, the Youth Venture Capital Fund, it's performed very well even though it was delayed in law in starting. It started nine months late, but in a few months, 74% had been disbursed. There's the food silos, which have been, uh, they have been beginning to build in the, in the countryside, right. cultural zoning, and the higher payee right. threshold. How do you think these tools, uh, I would like to ask to evaluate <coughs> some of them. I think that uh, lift it, raising the threshold Simple. It's simple, but okay, it was a good thing. And yeah. there's been a, 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 a cry, a push for it for, for a very long time. Really? I think. Yeah. In the last, I think it's been pushed uh, since the last four years or so. Um, so raising the threshold will give some relief to people who are earning less than 230. Um, and 30. But what I don't know is whether many of them are actually in the in the tax market, you know, uh, 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 ring. There, there are many people who, for instance, are... Who are supposed to pay taxes and they don't pay taxes. Who are supposed to be taxed. Farmers yes. in the villages, ranch taxes. owners. Exactly. Yeah, most, of, all most, all of, most of these are government workers who earn their salaries. From, from <laughs> and government. there are very few. Yeah. There, there are very few, really, the people who will benefit from, 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 from that threshold. <laughs> but also... Um, what else did you talk about? The other... Well, I mean, that, 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 that's not something you can ignore. You also have teachers' pay uh, salaries raised. The teachers' salary have... That's a large number of people. 290 billion shillings is going to be released. It's not going to be taxed most much of it. Yeah, teachers' salary. Teachers' salaries was a good thing. But then, what we... What we... Uh, I, I think also... I think... When I was still in the brewery... You, you know, I used to work in Uganda breweries. And we did some kind of research. And uh, it was found then that the people who drink beer yes. were about 200,000. They could have gone up to half a million people. And those are the people who actually buy fuel, uh, watch TV, Consumptive clothes. buy clothes, mm. uh, pay school fees. And, for the, and behind each of those people, no there is maybe 10... 10 people whom they look after. So the entire economy depends, on, a tiny depends of yeah, on about half a million people. All right. So really, and those are the people now whose uh, pairs you earn has been raised um, to to 40 percent to f from 30 to 40 to 40 percent. I'm not so sure whether uh, those people and they are the ones who are going to drink the beer whose uh, tax has been. Uh, there seems to be a lot of contradiction in the way that. Uh, right. uh, well, we are from Morrison. I'm sure he has. A I, I, I find some contradictions okay, in, in we'll the whole of that. We'll hear from you. So Morrison. I really don't know where the growth. I wish the minister would tell us where the growth is supposed to come from. All right. Because if you say seventy percent of the population live in the villages okay. on agriculture, right. and you give three point you, you three point seven percent of the budget to agriculture to seven, where is the growth supposed to come from? I think right. the minister should have helped us. Morrison would probably help us there. Well, this is Spectrum Radio. We're going for a break. We'll be back. Join Airtel today and get fifty percent bonus airtime instantly. That's right, fifty percent bonus air time to call across all networks. <laughs> Simply buy and register a new Airtel SIM card. Top up 1,000 shillings and more and 50% bonus airtime to call across all networks is yours. Join Airtel today. Get bonus today. Airtel. When Junior lost his appetite, his mother tried all methods to get him to eat. She tried scary stories. Eat, Tommy, eat, or the big black elephant will come and eat all your food. Mm -mm. She tried magic. Tommy, if you eat your food, I will turn this handkerchief into sweets. Look, bumble, bumble, boom, boom. Mm -mm. 
Then she discovered Apatol multivitamin syrup with lysine. Mommy, I finished all the food. I am number one. Apatol multivitamin with lysine is helping mothers to turn mealtime frustration to a fun moment. Apatol has a great taste and contains lysine, which quickly improves your child's appetite and supports healthy growth. Apatol, health for life. John, Mike and I, we go back a bit. We knew John at the beginning, working for someone else. But he was different. He had vision, saw opportunities. He started working towards his goal, opened his own garage and worked, learning the hard way. His reputation spread. Trust, consistency, quality. Soon people were coming to him from all parts. He made himself and his whole street prosper and also helped friends seeing potential in people and helping them on. But John never shouts about all his success. He is just who he is. Special. So here's to men like John who make a difference, who enjoy Nile Special, the rich satisfying taste from the sauce. Nile Special. You've earned it. Not for sale to persons under 18. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. What are the challenges likely to frustrate the 2012-2013 national budget? Our guests tonight, Honorable Betty Kanya, President of the Uganda Federal Alliance Political Party, Honorable William Okecho, former Chairman of the Budget Committee in Parliament, and Mr. Morrison Rokokamba, Program Manager at Taweza East Africa. You will be able to contribute to this discussion by calling in at some stage. You can also send your messages via text to 7197. That is Spectrum. Message, question or comment, send it to 7197. Morrison, talk to us about the tools that could leverage this economy this particular year. Yeah, one of them is absolute uh, to manage the national deficit uh, because it's worrying when uh, we are importing goods and services that are worth about uh, the United States but over five fifty one, you know, five billion in imports and uh, we are only exporting what is worth 5.1 billion United States dollars so that's uh, that's a huge a huge deficit yes there's a current account but, but of yeah. course so it's been balanced out by by the FDIs yeah but but I mean you cannot you, you cannot only benefit from FDIs and tourists FDIs if, and yeah, the, uh, yeah because, because if remittances you, yeah and remittances but if you have looked at uh, all over the history of, of budgets and, and and national balancing even talked about by this Roman philosopher Cicero is that a national budget must be balanced and it must be indigenously grown. Yeah. Meaning that you need to invest internally. internally in productive sectors of the economy, raise the necessary revenue, by the way, from within, and be able to engage other other countries. But it has to start from within. So and we, we need to... Tell us about your optimism for this, yes. where the growth area is going to be. Yeah, so the, the investment in energy, the investment in infrastructure, the investment within agriculture, if the resources that have been, you know, appropriated, allocated, um, are, ga are, ga used. are again free, deployed and used, yes. then you have this feeling that uh, uh, the, the economy will revamp. The other issue is, uh, uh, is of course, maintaining the curve of reducing the inflation. It is still a double-digit figure at one or at 18 percent, pushing it below 10 percent. We'll again, uh, we'll again increase our. I will again increase our chances. The other issue is uh, leadership at the local level, at the community level. I think most leaders at the LC level have become politicians. They are supposed to become, they are supposed to be community leaders, mobilizing their people to produce, making sure that people at 11 a.m. are not the, at the bus, but they are busy working on their shops, or working in their gardens, and producing because GDP is the value of economic activity in a country. It is that right. aggregate value. Yes. The other thing, which actually Cicero talked about, this Roman uh, philosopher, yes. was that budgets should not sh should remind people that they need to get up and work. You see, you have this element creeping in where people also just expect government to supply and supply and give and give. No. But for them, they just sit down and they don't work. People must be reminded to go back and work at all levels. <coughs> and it is that conglomeration, it is that amalgam of every individual's efforts, every family's efforts, that will increase the national value, increase our GDP, and uh, and uh, of course turn back the turn back the economy. You've spoken about energy. Let's talk about <laughs> a little bit about the energies, the agriculture. Uh, 
agricultural zoning and the food silos? How do you think they would help? Yeah, for where the rural electrification agency has worked, it would be very interesting to audit to see uh, what kind of value addition is the rural electrification, you know, uh, putting across in some of the in some of the rural areas. But what I, what I would comment on the new commodities, beans and maize, and, uh, uh, that are within the zoning strategy, apart from coffee, is that I think what the what the minister of finance should have told us is that if you are flagging beans in a particular region we need to know the kind of tons the, the tons that we are going to have at the end the of the target for the, the target if you're talking about maize what is going to be the target i would have expected things well sometimes like, you can't really quantify yeah it, no you can you cannot sort of quantify you have all these institutions that are supposed to be doing it yes but the other thing is that if you came up with a policy for instance to stop exporting of unprocessed maize that would be that would have very serious policy implications and economic implications for Uganda. Because when we export maize especially to, to Kenya, that is unprocessed, they process the they, they actually process it the and sell us so and sell us animal feed, chachu and at all the that. same price mm -hmm. as you sold them the maize probably. <laughs> because uh, I was talking about smart budgeting. Smart budgeting actually means that even the little resources you don't have to have all the resources in the world, but how do you leverage the little resources that you have in order to spur the economy? Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about uh, the Youth Venture Capital Fund and the graduate, but let's specifically with the graduate, because that's a new thing. How would it impact the graduate venture capital? First of all, the graduates don't have businesses. Well, they have minds, they can plan, they can conceptualize. <laughs> they, can, they, can, they, can, they can conceptualize, yes, but to get them to start, it is a long gestation period. And these people, from what I know, I mean, I also have children who are graduates, you give them money to go and invest, I don't know whether they are going to put it all in the investment. You know, they have a problem with trying to live an artificial life, a life over and above what they can actually, you know, afford. afford. And really that's where we are. If I saw, actually when I saw them fighting for, for, for food, possible. For food at the at the, at the KCCA, they took it from the policemen you know? and served themselves. I mean, what for? I mean, that, the that was just mob hooliganism. That was it mob hooliganism. It can happen mm. even for money. Uh, you are with money. I'm telling you, if you give, I mean, the president has been up to giving people some handouts, 20 million what these 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 taxi drivers, these border border drivers, and so yes. on. But they fight for this money and they want to split it. I mean, distribute it and and, and eat it. It has, it has know, no impact. Uh, I, I want to say something about that. Yeah. You know, when I was a member of parliament, I put out projects for young people. And I secured, or I guaranteed, a loan yeah. for border borders. Yes. And I gave about 100 young people. In Rubagano. Border borders. A brand new. Yes. I did the same border. border. Yes. I just yeah. gave him a border border. Worth about 2.6 million yes. what was it So it's like giving them. What were they supposed to do with that? They were supposed to pay back. Pay back that money. But I'm telling you, yes. I ended up almost uh, paying for them. Paying, you almost uh, losing my property for to pay back. I can tell you, out of 100, I can talk about three, maybe, yes. who performed well. So it's not as if when you give somebody money, mm -hmm. they will necessarily, yes, because a Buddha Buddha is as good or even better than give somebody money because you've even given an idea right and it's even a business that you business. Can, yeah and the management can plan be because you say listen you're going to pay to, to deposit a hundred uh, uh, ten thousand every every day in such and such a place and by the end if you do this religiously and please you go to service the vehicle uh, uh, the motorcycle every so often and please um, uh, uh, pack them in you even give them a business plan That's you know you've done, yes. you, you've done everything and give them give them, them capital worth 2.5 million shillings right. they don't have it nobody has it there are about three or four people who really you know so what should they have done what should government so do my point is that just necessarily giving somebody money and I agree with honorable so what should the question There's, we need to put we need first of all to address things like our education system our mindset a mindset which says that once you get out of the university then you you get a job yes so they're given them but I, 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 
when I'm talking about the young people whom I often talk to and you say listen I want to give an example which I usually give ladies they usually trim their eyebrows okay oh. but yeah they do Go. Yeah, they, they trim <laughs> like men trim oh, their, their beards or their hair you know yes. so you trim your eyebrows it costs you 2,000 shillings to trim your eyebrows yes. if you go to a salon but if you're driving a car you need to drive there look for parking which is an absolute nightmare to find parking yes. in this place and you're just going yes. to spend it. but if somebody came to my doorstep on every Monday I'd be so happy to pay them 5,000 you know so we need a complete mind shift right. in the boys who move around vending these services Morris <laughs> really what should have been done the this year the venture capital fund for the young men and then the graduate venture capital fund why uh, a venture fund yes. the way this venture fund was designed was not a venture fund the venture fund is about an idea people who come up with ideas who have ideas but they are stringent conditions so you create a venture in order to circumvent those stringent uh, conditionalities so because many young people there are many young people close I, I, I don't buy the idea of, of Honor Bukamia that you know there are so many young people who have good ideas who have got the ambition straight who have the got university. the will straight from the university straight from colleges straight from technical schools who have got these fantastic ideas but they cannot go to a bank because they don't have corato they don't have uh, salvation armies they don't have uh, guarantors they don't have that and you're sure they would uh, yeah that. i think so, 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 that's really the problem. idea the, the, the issue is the management the it's really the management the 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 of the internet, internet. Of the internet. Yeah. Well, if you can google and get ideas but it's really the management the management of, of the business yes. and you need and that skills for that, that skills. calls for discipline but ideas for goodness sake you can google ideas and get ideas yeah, yeah, yeah. and but you I'm can get a business plan written experience is extremely important you know and they, they can only get the experience by looking at other people doing the business. Right. And that's why you, we're you, saying, you ask them who gave Zuckerberg experience. Um, How did Silicon Valley come in place? Well, there will always be exceptions. Yeah, so those are the exceptions. I'm talking that these exceptions yeah, are here in this country, yeah, yeah. and a venture fund would stimulate those innovators the, I'm, already I'm, in this I'm country. Telling, I'm telling you, I'm telling, I'm telling you, you I'm telling you, even those people are not getting that, that venture fund. That's For what instance, what you're talking about. No, if you negotiated, they can go to the bank and get money. Um, made uh, created conditions no, no. for um, for for people to go even abroad and study for two years and not study and work and work and get good work ethics. Work. Yes. That money would be well spent to get a, a somebody negotiate given with a give an exposure, exposure yeah. negotiate with another with the UK to get uh, twenty thousand um, work permits for two years. Then you spend that money on that and give them when they have exposure. enterprise you can get somebody who is not doing yeah. anything and just give them and I've got to train many money. people who have failed mm. I'm telling you, you have well, the number I know very well very well very well very well very well very well and we support it people out there should not say that we don't support it but I think it should be designed and supported from the listeners I know myself I've run a business which was too successful for me to handle that's about 15 years ago and I didn't have anyone to mentor me and the money became too much and I couldn't even handle it you couldn't even handle the money what it means to have experience in business well let's ask Mr. Trump can call in now our numbers Zero four one four three four eight one 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 that yeah. Zero three one two two six zero three nine zero zero three one two two six one three nine zero. Too much money can destroy a business. It destroyed my business many years, fifteen years ago. You need that on the job, but Spectrum hello. You need to have experience. Good evening, your name. Yes, sir.
Spectrum, hello? Hello? Okay, your name, my friend? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir, your name? I'm Martin. Martin, yes. Spectrum, hello. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Your name? My name is Spectrum, hello? Hello? Okay, let's get back to the studio. Hurry, I'll let you come here. Mm. I, I thank you, gentlemen who have called in. Let's take one final caller then. Hello. Yes, sir, your name? Edmund. Yes, my friend. Miscommunication that we lost. Okay, let's get back to you. I just want to talk about the youth uh, funds. Well, mm. I appreciate the effort that focuses on, on the youth. It's a great effort. But if if uh, the the uh, was targeted at ordinary people, yes, mature people with experience, collapsed, nuds, seasoned farmers. Oh, it was timed wrongly. Some people thought it was for voting wisely, so they took it home. Yeah, but it's no, like Bonawakagawa, for instance, it starts on day one. It's it's in the president's manifesto. It starts mm. on day one. Mm. So really, we, that's why I agree with the, those who think that we need a deep appreciation of how to implement our budgets. But first of all, it be, should begin with analyzing the previous failures yes. and mm. why we are not moving moving forward. You, Morrison here is very optimistic and I, I really, his optimism is almost uh, infectious, it's a great thing. But <laughs> if, if seasoned business people failed, uh, people, w w adults failed with Ntandikwa and adults with a bit of experience failed with Onawagagawari and adults with a bit of experience failed with the circles. Morris, what makes you think that the young people with no experience at all are going to create a miracle with this you think we need to understand what it is that makes these projects fail yeah. and address them. Incidentally, in the, the, the so-called tigers, it is the people who get good jobs that drive the economy. It's in the U.S. they try to give people homes. Most homes actually belong to people who, uh, 
most people live in rented homes. In the US they try to break the rules, it almost broke their economy. In the Asian Tigers, Singapore and so on. Most people make money, get get it off good salaries, not necessarily because they have small businesses. Small businesses never uh, did it. Morrison, there's never did much. Uh, mm -hmm. well, actually, it's that big businesses employing many people. Many people. Small, yes. small businesses are the bedrock of most economies, even including the United States. It is not JP Morgan. There's a difference between small it is not and Google. Tiny, tiny, tiny. It is not Google that employ the most Americans. This is why it is the main street in the United States. It is not the world streets. It is not the world street. <laughs> small businesses are the anchor of every economy in the world. This is why my call to, United, to, to Uganda Revenue Authority and other government agencies has been, how do we get these informal businesses into form <laughs> such that they can be able to pay taxes? <laughs> and I, say, I suggested that we'll get to us. Listen, I suggested mm -hmm. that the issue should be to create an incentive structure or explain an already existing incentive structure that would move the informal or attract the informal into the formal. And I will mention some of them. One, everybody pays VAT. So if these informal people, businesses knew that they can get their VAT returns, it could be a very interesting incentive. The other incentive is if you would access financial resources from available banking institutions, are you formal or you're not formal? If you're formal, it should be easier for you. If you are to trade or get the benefits of, well, the, you can't com get money from of the common money market, from the if you are to benefit from the you know options given by the common market, then you need to be formal. There could be these incentives, if they were explained, then to, they would push many informal businesses to formal and they would get those benefits and then Uganda Revenue Authority would be able to pick more resources from them. So for me, yes, smaller businesses are the ones that drive the economy. And this youth venture van would open up options for those who have ideas, who have the experience. This talk about experience. Who this talk about experience. This talk about Let's get that underlying. Hmm? Who have the that's experience. Why who gain experience and who have the ideas the and who run on the job. Venture capital, venture capital funds all over the world have never succeeded by over 40 percent. No, a venture capital fund is supposed to open up these ideas that have uh, an opportunity or that have a potential to, be to, 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 to actually become big and, and change the trajectory of the economy. Most of them fail, 60 percent. But if 40 percent succeeds, then you what? can transform an economy. Honorable Ketchum. Yeah. I think there's something which I don't want to forget. Uh, and I think Morris was emphasizing on it, that is the issue of electrification. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is rural electrification and all this, that, you know. But what we must understand now is affordability of this electricity that is being now produced. Most people, most trading centers, most youths in these trading centers can't afford this electricity. I think it's too expensive. It is too expensive and they are just not in a position to so use So you think we'll have redundant money. capacity rather than redundant power? Yeah. That's a possibility? I think it's a cultural such a way that, you know, because people are not going to afford, they can only produce at the level now, you know, saying that in two years, you know, it will be apparent that definitely people are not affording. I mean, people will be picking up a bit and therefore there will be another shortage. But it appears right now it is not going to be easy for the people to use this power. And therefore, there's no need for us to harp about it. Well, that's something we need yes. to study with, the, especially the rural electrification. Yes. Is how it's been able to work. Honorable Bishop, somebody I mean, I mean, about to react to Morrison. Yeah, I wanted to react to Morris. And Morris is right. Morrison is right when he says, uh, in the economies like India and other mm. places, the medium said, scale, the medium scale. not the small one. It's the medium not scale. scale. No, no, but even the small no, one. No, 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 in India oh. and other, it's the small one, the backyard. People have uh, small shops in their backyard to make toothpicks and papers and whatever in their garages. And it's a, it's a, it was a deliberate policy. But then, what I wanted to say, in in the United States, for instance, only two percent of the population are in agriculture. That's true. The rest are people. in service industry industry. and manufacturing, manufacturing. industry. Yes. In other mid-income countries like Brazil, it's only 20% who are in agriculture. Yes. The others are in service industries and mining industries. But in Uganda, yes. where 70-80% yes. are agriculture, that is where you've got to put the money. Right. And where are they going to get? Because then the, 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 that, that is where the most population are. Right. But in other countries, you're talking about Morris, Morrison, the, 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 the bulk of the population are actually
actually in, in, service in service industries and manufacturing industries. Right. Mm. But for us, it's We're the reverse. Of course, it's still the high agriculture. That's you why know, you agriculture is money. a chain. Agriculture is a value chain. Yeah, so you need then you need side. guidance yeah. 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 that yeah. the money should go in, should service agricultural best uh, initiatives. Yeah. yeah, you're correct on that. Well, of course, they used to say that uh, you have to move from the field to the factory, moving far away from agriculture. Then recently, now, now they talk about you have to move from tilling the land to manning the till. That is moving away from agriculture, agriculture as well. to the bank till. Well, I have to end here. Thank you. Interesting debate. Many open areas, things we could not tell, we could not close. Yeah. Uh, the argument could be discussion continues. And thank you very much, Morrison, for that uh, your perspective. Though we didn't, you know, across the table, or not, not necessarily agreement uh, to all of them. Thank you very much, the Honorable Betty Kamba, President of the Uganda Federal Alliance Party, uh, Honorable William Okecho, former chairman of the Budget Committee in Parliament, and Morrison, Mr. Morrison Rakakamba, Program Manager to East Africa. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Ed Monty. So Spectrum will be back tomorrow. Up next is the news in English. Thank you. You are seated in a car, talking on your phone. Hi.